With a new God of War game on the horizon, a mellowed out Kratos working on his Dad of the Year award, and a shift from Greek to Norse mythology, it's important to take a look back at the journey of Kratos and see just how far he's come. Here's God of War's story in seven minutes. Spoilers ahead. This is our anti-hero Kratos, a Spartan warrior who we later learn is actually a demigod born of Zeus and a mortal woman named Callisto. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. One day, Kratos gets overwhelmed in battle and cries out for help to Ares, the God of War. Ares! Destroy my enemies, and my life is yours. And Ares responds accordingly. <laughs> and thus, Kratos becomes a servant to the god of war. That is, until that fateful day when he is tricked into killing his own wife and child in a fit of rage. The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. Kratos attempts to break free of his blood oath with Ares, but in the process gets defeated and captured by the Three Furies. The Furies mess with Kratos' mind, giving him amnesia and leaving him docile in their mystical illusion. This goes on until Orcos, the Keeper of Oaths, leads Kratos to the Oracle of Delphi to clear his clouded mind and learn the truth. But remember, the truth always comes with a price. The Oracle tells Kratos that in order to break free from his madness, he must kill those who keep his bond to Ares, the Furies. And so, Kratos does just that. Afterwards, Kratos learns that he must kill one more person in order to truly be free of his bond and restore his lost memories. Sweet, innocent Orcos. Kratos kills him, but it turns out that the memories that he fought so hard to restore were actually the nightmares of him murdering his family. He then makes it his goal in life to remove these memories through his service to the goddess Athena. Cut to Persephone, who's rightfully pissed off about being forced to marry Hades and rule a bunch of dead people in the underworld. To get revenge, she plans to destroy the Pillar of the World, which would bring Mount Olympus down with it. More importantly though, during Kratos' mission to stop Persephone, he travels to the Underworld and is reunited with his lost daughter, Calliope. Why did you go? I am here now, child, and I will not leave you again. Seeing her again makes Kratos want to forsake everything in order to be with her. Unfortunately, that's not a possibility, and Kratos must leave his daughter behind to stop Persephone and Atlas from destroying Olympus. After killing Persephone and chaining Atlas to the pillar, Kratos once again resigns himself to his fate of serving the gods, which he does for about a decade until he gets fed up. Still haunted by his nightmares that the gods have promised to get rid of, he confronts Athena about it. Athena! Ten years, Athena. I have faithfully served the gods for ten years. When will you relieve me of these nightmares? The Goddess of Wisdom lays it all out for him. Defeat the rampaging Ares, and she will rid Kratos of his burden. His journey leads him to Pandora's box, inside of which lies the power to kill a god. But before he can claim that power, Ares hurls a stake from exactly 621,528 yards away. It's true, we measured it. And pins Kratos to the wall. Kratos somehow falls down to the underworld, fights his way back up, because that's apparently how it works, opens Pandora's box, becomes a giant, defeats his inner demons, and finally kills Ares. After saving Athens and Olympus, Athena thanks Kratos for his service, but still won't rid him of the nightmares that plague him. Instead of just letting him die, Athena makes the biggest mistake of her immortal life. She puts him on the throne as the new god of war. Kratos takes a sidebar to find his long-lost brother, Deimos, who was taken away by the gods out of fear of an oracle's prophecy that a marked mortal would bring the destruction of Olympus, a prophecy that I'm sure the gods wished was a little more specific. During his adventure, Kratos sinks Atlantis, beats the heck out of his child self, and kills the god of death. He finally reunites with his brother, only to see him killed in a battle against Thanatos. With all of Kratos' ties to the mortal realm now severed, Athena attempts to fully transition Kratos into a god, and shockingly, Kratos replies with a vitriol-soaked threat. It is not over, Athena. The gods will pay for this. Officially the god of war, Kratos rules with an iron fist, conquering cities left and right, to the point where the gods of Olympus start to get a little bit concerned. After Athena brings the Colossus of Rhodes to life, Zeus tricks Kratos by offering him the Blade of Olympus and convinces him to put all of his godly power into it in order to bring down the Colossus. Which, to Zeus's credit, it totally does, but it also leaves Kratos drained and, well, mortal. This gives Zeus his opening to kill Kratos and send him down once again to the underworld. Kratos doesn't spend very long on his yearly vacation to Hades and returns to the world of living with a brand new goal. Kill Zeus and anyone that gets in his way. In order to do that, Kratos enlists the help of the Titan Gaia and sets off to find the Sisters of Fate, kill them, and use their power to return to the moment he was killed. 
Kratos succeeds, but before he's able to kill Zeus, Athena sacrifices herself by throwing her body in front of Kratos' blade. In her dying words, she explains that Zeus is Olympus, and that his death will mean the total destruction of the gods. Oh, and she also tells Kratos that Zeus is his father. Spoilers. No, I have no father. Kratos really couldn't care less though, as he goes back even further in time, gets an army of titans to fight alongside him, and storms Mount Olympus. Zeus, your son has returned! I bring the destruction of Olympus! After a brutal fight with Poseidon, Kratos confronts Zeus and, wouldn't you know it, he dies. One more trip to the underworld, but this time he actually kills Hades himself before making it back to the world of the living. Kratos learns that the key to killing Zeus is once again within Pandora's box, locked away behind the flames of Olympus, which can only be extinguished by Pandora herself. After killing pretty much every remaining god left in the Greek pantheon, Kratos finds Pandora, faces off against Zeus in a rage-charged shouting contest, allows Pandora to sacrifice herself to quell the flames of Olympus, and then checks inside the box to find nothing. Turns out, when Kratos first opened the box to kill Ares, he released all the evils kept inside of it. Those evils infected the gods and instilled Zeus with the fear that drove him to try and kill Kratos. But Athena hid something else inside the box, hope. Using the power of hope, Kratos kills Zeus once and for all, which leaves the world in a pretty bad way. The ghost of Athena attempts to get the power of hope back from Kratos in order to rebuild humanity with her as its ruler. Instead, Kratos takes the Sword of Olympus, drives it through his belly once again, and returns the power of hope to mankind. But death is a minor speed bump to the god of war. Kratos' Greek journey ends with a blood trail leading off a cliff and a horizon full of godless chaos. Obviously, Kratos' adventure is far from over. How did he survive this, make his way into the world of Norse mythology, and become a seemingly solid dad to a kid named Atreus? We'll find out when the next God of War hits PlayStation 4. Thanks for watching. If you still want more Kratos, check out all of our God of War coverage right here at IGN.